Harrison Ford is an American actor. Regarded as a cinematic cultural icon, he has been a leading man in films of several genres and starred in many major box office successes, particularly in the 1980s and 1990s. His films have grossed more than $5.4 billion in North America and more than $9.3 billion worldwide. Wikipedia Born, July 13, 1942, age 82 years, Chicago, Illinois, United States. Upcoming movies, Captain America, Brave New World, Thunderbolts, Star. Spouse, Callista Flockhart, M. 2010, Melissa Matheson, M. 1983-2004, Mary Marquardt, M. 1964-1979. Children, Liam Flockhart, Ben Ford, Willard Ford, Georgia Ford, Malcolm Ford. Height, 1.85 meters. Parents, Christopher Ford, Dorothy Ford. Harrison Ford was born on July 13, 1942 in Chicago, Illinois, to Dorothy, Neidelman, a radio actress, and Christopher Ford, born John William Ford, an actor-turned-advertising executive. His father was of Irish and German ancestry, while his maternal grandparents were Jewish immigrants from Minsk, Belarus. Harrison was a lackluster student at Maine Township High School East in Park Ridge, Illinois, no athletic star, never above a C average. After dropping out of Ripon College in Wisconsin, where he did some acting and later summer stock, he signed a Hollywood contract with Columbia and later Universal. His roles in movies and television, Ironside, 1967, The Virginian, 1962, remained secondary and, discouraged, he turned to a career in professional carpentry. He came back big for years later, however, as Bob Falfa in American Graffiti, 1973. For years after that, he hit colossal with the role of Han Solo in Star Wars, Episode IV, A New Hope, 1977. Another for years in Ford was Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981. For years later and he received Academy Award and Golden Globe nominations for his role as John Book in Witness, 1985. All he managed for years after that was his third, starring success as Indiana Jones, in fact. Many of his earlier successful roles led to sequels as did his more recent portrayal of Jack Ryan in Patriot Games, 1992. Another Golden Globe nomination came his way for the part of Dr. Richard Kimball in The Fugitive, 1993. He is clearly a well-established Hollywood superstar. He also maintains an 800-acre ranch in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Ford is a private pilot of both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, and owns an 800-acre, 3.2 square kilometers, ranch in Jackson, Wyoming, approximately half of which he has donated as a nature reserve. On several occasions, Ford has personally provided emergency helicopter services at the request of local authorities, in one instance rescuing a hiker overcome by dehydration. Ford began flight training in the 1960s, at Wild Rose Idlild Airport in Wild Rose, Wisconsin, flying in a Piper PAE to to try Pacer but at $15 an hour, he could not afford to continue the training. In the mid-1990s, he bought a used Gulfstream II and asked one of his pilots, Terry Bender, to give him flying lessons. They started flying a Cessna 182 out of Jackson, Wyoming, later switching to Teterboro, New Jersey, flying a Cessna 206, the aircraft he soloed in. Ford is an honorary board member of the humanitarian aviation organization Wings of Hope. On March 5, 2015, Ford's plane, believed to be a Ryan PT-2 to, to recruit, made an emergency landing on the Penmar Golf Course in Venice, California. Ford had radioed in to report that the plane had suffered engine failure. He was taken to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, where he was reported to be in fair to moderate condition. Ford suffered a broken pelvis and broken ankle during the accident, as well as other injuries. Family Spouses Callista Flockhart, June, the 15th, 2010, present, one child, Melissa Matheson, March, the 14th, 1983, January, the 6th, 2004, divorced, two children, Mary Marquart, June, the 18th, 1964, October, the 3rd, 1979, divorced, two children, children, Willard Ford, Ben Ford, Malcolm Ford, Georgia Ford, Liam Flockhart, parents, Dorothy Ford, Neidelman, Christopher Ford, relatives, Terence Ford, sibling, trademarks, frequently plays characters who use their intelligence rather than physical strength, 
known to take a lot of hits and endure a lot of pain in his action films. Quiet but charming personality, deep, soft, soothing voice. Best known for his iconic roles as Han Solo and Indiana Jones. Known for playing unwilling but quick-witted heroes who can think on their feet. Often works with Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Sarcastic, world-weary sense of humor. Has a scar on his chin and a pierced left ear. Performs many of his own stunts. Many of his films feature a scene of him pointing his finger in someone's face. Known for his low-key naturalistic performances and often doing minimal rehearsal to achieve the effect. Characters with a cynical or world-weary personality. Trivia. He recommended River Phoenix for the role of the young Indiana Jones in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, 1989. Ford and Phoenix had previously played father and son in The Mosquito Coast, 1986. He scared director Steven Spielberg and the crew during Indiana Jones and The Temple of Doom, 1984, when, without warning, he ran out across the rope bridge used in the film's climax to test its safety. Spielberg later quipped, What can I say? Harrison really is Indiana Jones. Both his Indiana Jones jacket and fedora hat are on display at the Smithsonian Institution. On the 31st of July, 2000, he piloted his helicopter to rescue dehydrated 20-year-old hiker Sarah George from Table Mountain near his ranch in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Of the famous, Friendship Circle, of Steven Spielberg, George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola. He is the only actor to have worked with all three. He was initially argued against casting Sean Connery as his father in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, 1989, because Connery was only 12 years older. He later changed his mind and found he enjoyed working with Connery immensely. Of all the characters he has played, he frequently cites Indiana Jones as both his favorite and the one he is most proud of. Out of the three leads of the original Star Wars trilogy, he was the only one to appear in all three films without ever signing a contract. He lives in a white painted ranch house that he built himself in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He has a species of Central American ant, Pidal Harrison 40, and spider, Calponia Harrison 40, named after him in honor of his conservation work. One of his jobs in his early acting days, was as a royalty on tour with The Doors. He is credited with creating what many believe to be the best scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981, because he was suffering from a bout of dysentery at the time of filming during the scene in Cairo with the Swordsman in Black. The script called for a much longer fight, but because of his condition, he quietly asked director Steven Spielberg if they could shorten the scene. Spielberg's reply was that the only way it could be done would be if Indy pulled out his gun and just shot the guy. The rest of the crew, not aware of the change, laughed at this, and it remained in the final cut. He was a master carpenter before becoming a movie star, a craft he still does as a hobby. He worked as a carpenter in Los Angeles before achieving fame in movies, mainly doing home remodeling work. He had a reputation as one of the best cabinet makers in the city, and his services were much in demand on Los Angeles' trendy west side long before he became a movie star. He has starred in a film that has grossed at least $100 million at the U.S. box office for five consecutive decades. He presented his Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, 1989, co-star Sir Sean Connery with the American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award, telling him, John Wayne gave us the Old West, James Stewart gave us our town, you gave us the world, June, the 8th, 2006, during the scene where he is frozen in carbonite in Star Wars, Episode V. The Empire Strikes Back, 1980, Carrie Fisher says, I love you, and Ford was supposed to reply, I love you too, but he suggested changing it to, I know. He said in an interview that he felt compelled to do his own stunts for the Indiana Jones trilogy because the films were very action-oriented, and he felt if he were not in the middle of it, there was really not much else for him to do. He was very close with and greatly admired River Phoenix. He is a private pilot, single-engine fixed wing and helicopter. He owns a Bonanza, Gulfstream IV, de Havilland Beaver, and Bell 407 helicopter. Destroyed first 407 during simulated, engine out, practice. Regularly flies himself between New York City and Wyoming homes. Has a loft in Tribeca, New York City. He had no formal training as a carpenter. He borrowed books on carpentry from the library, studied them and then practiced in an empty house before he got good enough, at this that this became his primary job before becoming a major Hollywood actor. He found he enjoyed carpentry so much that he kept this as a hobby. He is honored for his work with the environment. Ford was asked to name a current breed of butterfly. He named this after his daughter, 
Georgia, Carrie Fisher had to stand on a box for most of her scenes with him, in the original Star Wars trilogy because she was a foot shorter than him and did not properly fit into the frame. He starred in five consecutive films, beginning with Apocalypse Now, 1979, and ending with Star Wars, Episode VI, Return of the Jedi 1983. That are on the IMB Top 250 list. He has eight films on the list overall, tying for second place with Robert De Niro. James Stewart has the most with nine. His two most famous roles were actually not written for him. He became attached to Star Wars, Episode IV, A New Hope, 1977, when he was reading lines with other actors doing their screen tests. When it came time to cast Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981, George Lucas was adamant about not casting Ford because he did not want every movie he did to be a Harrison Ford movie. However, after Tom Selleck backed out, Steven Spielberg suggested Ford again, and Lucas gave in. Neither of his two most famous roles, Han Solo and Indiana Jones, were offered to him first. Tom Selleck was the first choice to play Indiana Jones, but there were issues with his contract with Magnum P.I.N.D. Christopher Walken was the first choice to play Han Solo. Han Solo was also turned down by Al Pacino. He adopted then fiancé Callista Flockhart's son Liam Flockhart. He suffered a back injury while filming Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, 1984, and underwent an experimental, at the time, disc operation utilizing a papaya enzyme. While he was away Steven Spielberg filmed around him as best he could, including most of the conveyor belt scene, using Vic Armstrong a British-born stuntman who looked so much like Ford that members of the crew were always confusing the two. Ford resumed doing his own stunts upon his return, and his close-ups were added later into the finished film. He said one of the things he enjoyed most about making both Witness, 1985, and The Mosquito Coast, 1986, was getting to apply his real-life skills as a carpenter. Example, the barn-raising scene from Witness, 1985. He was originally brought in by George Lucas to feed lines to other actors auditioning for Star Wars, Episode IV, A New Hope, 1977, because he wasn't allowed to audition, Lucas wanted new faces for the film. Quotes, It's a little known fact, but I wanted Han Solo to die at the end of Star Wars, Episode VI, Return of the Jedi, 1983. I thought it would give more weight and resonance. But George Lucas wasn't sympathetic. He didn't want me killed by those teddy bear guys. To theater owners in Las Vegas, I'll make you a deal. I'll try to keep making films that put people in your theater seats, and you try to keep their shoes from sticking to the floor. On being a leading man, I'm like a fireman. When I go out on a call, I want to put out a big fire. I don't want to put out a fire in a dumpster. I used to shake my head, as in, no. I just look like him, but that's not fair. So I said to those little old ladies at Trenton Airport, yes, I am Harrison Ford, and they still didn't believe it was me. On playing Indiana Jones again in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, 2008, no one wants to see a hero have to pick up his cane to hit someone, but I'm still quite fit enough to fake it. On his marriage to Melissa Matheson, it was just part of the continuum of the relationship. I don't know if I ever proposed to her. I don't do stunts, I do running jumping and falling down. After 25 years, I know exactly what I'm doing. I don't think I've mastered anything. I'm still wrestling with the same frustrations, the same issues, the same problems as I always did. That's what life is like. When asked, if heaven exists, what would you want God to say to you at the pearly gates? You're a lot better looking in person. You know you're getting old when all the names in your black book have MD, Mother Dearest, after them. I think I did have a reputation for being grumpy. I don't think I'm grumpy. I have opinions. I have an independent vision. I am a purposeful person. But on a daily basis, I think I'm other than grumpy. I think it is a case where I am coming to do business, and not there just to be flattered, and cajoled and use. The loss of anonymity is something that nobody can prepare you for. When it happened, I recognized that I'd lost one of the most valuable things in life. To this day, I'm not all that happy about it. 1997 after the Star Wars trilogy was reissued, explaining his disinterest in repeating the role of Han Solo, once a film is finished, it's over for me. I'm on to something else. Acknowledging that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg originally wanted another actor to play Indiana Jones, my playing Indy was mentioned to me about only six weeks before shooting started, but being second choice wasn't at all offensive. I would always assume that it would be normal for a director, once having worked with an actor in a particular part, not to think 
of him for something else. I presume that he'd want to accentuate the difference between the two characters by having another actor. I was more than happy when they did ask me to play Indiana Jones, because it promised to be a terrific role in a great film. On the early days of his career, I started by chasing a Folgers commercial, but I just somehow couldn't manage to say, Honey, that's a great cup of coffee. On what made him choose acting as a profession, failure in all other fields. People Magazine, 6 23rds, 03. There have been times in my life when I have felt I was lonely, but I don't think you want to live your life in order to mitigate against loneliness. Asked if he would ever play Indiana Jones again, in a New York Minute. Asked if he would ever play Han Solo again, no, because I have outgrown that character. After his first screen test, the studio guy told me, Kid, you have no future in this business. I said, why? He said, when Tony Curtis first walked on screen carrying a bag of groceries, a bag of groceries. You took one look at him, and said, that's a movie star. I said, weren't you supposed to say, that's a grocery delivery boy? I had no expectation of the level of adulation that would come my way. I just wanted to make a living with a regular role in a television series. On how Indiana Jones and Han Solo differed, different clothes, different character. That's how I feel about it. On Blade Runner, 1982, it could have been so much more than a cult movie. Starring in a science fiction film doesn't mean you have to act science fiction. Whoever had the bright idea of putting Indiana Jones in a leather jacket and a fedora in the jungle ought to be dragged into the street and shot. On the appeal of Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones is always getting in way over his head and just barely getting out by the skin of his teeth. Asked if he believes in the Force, I think the Force is in you. Force yourself on George Lucas. I think George likes people. I think George is a kind, warm-hearted person but he can be a little impatient with the nature of acting, the need to work, till you find something. He's like, it's right there, it's right there, I wrote it, it's there, just do it. But you can't just do it that easily. I am not the first man, who wanted to make changes in his life at 60 and I won't be the last. It is just that others can do it with anonymity. I was interested in changing my life. I have always had the ability to change and become other people through my acting. I took a good look at myself and decided I wanted something different from the way I was living. That's not such a bad thing, is it? But, because of my past, I think it took a lot of people by surprise. They wondered what was happening to me. I was very much aware of what was happening. I'm living the way I want to live. I think American films right now are suffering from an excess of scale. Lots of movies we're seeing now are more akin to video games than stories about human life and relationships. 12 to 20 year olds are maybe the largest economic force in the U.S. movie business. I'm not a very nostalgic person. Salaries Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, 2023, $25 million, 1,923, 2022, $1 million, Episode Star Wars, Episode VII, The Force Awakens, 2015, $25 million plus 0.5% of gross. The Expendables 3, 2014, six million nine hundred thousand dollars cowboys and aliens 2011 ten million dollars indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull 2008 65 million dollars firewall 2006 15 million dollars k19 the widowmaker 2002 25 million dollars plus 20 percent of the gross what lies beneath 2000 20 million dollars random hearts 1999 $20 million. Six Days Seven Nights, $1,998, $20 million. Air Force One, $1,997, $22 million. The Devil's Own, $1,997, $20 million. Clear and Present Danger, $1,994, $10 million. The Fugitive, $1,993, $6,600,000. Patriot Games, 1992 9 million dollars presumed innocent 1990 12 million 500000 dollars indiana jones and the last crusade 1989 4 million 900000 dollars the mosquito coast 1986 5 million dollars witness 1985 4 million dollars indiana jones and the temple of doom 1984 for million five hundred thousand dollars. Star Wars Episode VI: Return of the Jedi, one thousand nine hundred eighty-three, five hundred thousand dollars. Raiders of the Lost Ark, 
1981, $5,900,000. Star Wars, Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, 1980, $500,000. Star Wars, Episode IV, A New Hope, 1977, $10,000. American Graffiti, 1973, $500. Week, A Time for Killing, 1967, $150, week, love, $1,967, $150, week, dead heat on a merry-go-round, $1,966, $150. <laughs>